Now let's take a quick tour of 20SIM. I'm going to open up a blank 20SIM file, which has the EMX extension. And here I am in version 4.5. When you first enter 20SIM, you go into what's called the uh, 20SIM editor. You'll see graph paper. You'll see a bunch of buttons, which if you scroll over them, they'll tell you what they do. And I'll call your attention to some of the uh, more commonly used ones, and you can play around with this. Okay, uh, the two tabs over here, one of them tells you a hierarchy of the elements in your model, and the other one is a library, which has all the bond graph elements. It also has pretty much every element you'd find in Simulink under the signal sub-library. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bond graph of a simple system. I'm going to click on this bitmap button, and I'm going to insert an image. And this is the system that I'd like to uh, bond graph right now. Working in 20SIM, it's as simple as dropping and dragging the bond graph elements into the library, or into the editor window. Here I have a lever. I'm going to need a transformer. So I'll go into bond graphs, and I'll scroll down, and I'll pick the TF element. And if I want to change the name of it, I can right-click hit properties and I can call it lever or level go with lever and it shows the name underneath uh, what else am I going to have in this model? I'm going to have a source of effort and I'm going to have a an inertia so I need a source of effort if I bring in the SE element that's going to give me a constant force if I want a sinusoidal force or a ramp force then I'm going to bring in a modulated effort source and that modulated effort source is going to require some kind of a signal from a signal generator and then that signal will dictate the varying effort that comes out. I'll put in an I element for the mass. I'll right click and under properties I will call it mass. I will right click on the MSE I will call it, I can't use special characters in these names, I can't do F brackets T, so I'll just do F. Now, I'm the uh, effort source and the mass and the left end of the lever all have the same velocity V1. I'll bring in a one junction. I will right click and on the properties I will type in V1 and to show the name I will right click show name on the bottom it makes it a lot easier as your bond graphs get bigger if you do this bookkeeping up front now how do I connect how do I draw power bonds among these elements if I hit the space bar then I go from drop and drag mode or select mode which is also accessible with this arrow I toggle then into connect mode and I see all these little squares. These are the power ports uh, f that are defined for the different elements. That's not really that important right now. What's important is that to connect, if I want to connect the force source to the one junction, I left click and hold on the MSE, I drag over to the one junction, let go of the left button. Oops, now what that did was it took the signal out of the one junction and it thought I wanted to use that to define the modulated effort source. So let me first join the one junction to the mass. There will be no confusion there. Okay, so 20SIM knows that I want a power bond from V1 to the mass. Okay, make sure I'm in connect mode. I will left click and go into the transformer. Now the transformer has two power ports. It's a flow through device. I'm going to connect V1 to power port P1. Okay, and now uh, let me see. I'm going to try connecting the modulated effort source again. You can see if I scroll over the dark black box here, it says effort signal input. And if I scroll over the hollow square box, it says P power output. So to avoid the same problem we had a few minutes ago, I'm going to scroll over the power output port 
So that's where the half arrow bond should come from. I'll left click and drag over to the one junction. There we go. So here's a here's my bond graph emerging. On the other end of the lever, I'm going to have a uh, velocity v2. I'm going to select v11 junction, control c, control v. So I'll copy it. And it automatically called it v2 because what it does is, you know, if this had been called v and I copied and pasted it, it would have been called v1, then v2, then v3. So it automatically puts a number index on the copies of an element. Spacebar, get into connection mode. Drag from P2 of the lever over to the V2 one junction. I need a spring over here. So let me drag in a C element. Toggle to connect mode. Click and drag. There's my bond graph. Done. Now I can go into properties and I can say that I want to call this K. All right. What goes on underneath all of these icons? Okay, so the software has to turn these symbols into a set of equations. Um, if I want to go down into the equation submodel that defines this C element, I can either double click on it or I can click on it and I can hit the go down button. So here we are inside a C element. Uh, the code for 20SIM you'll find is reasonably intuitive. Uh, sometimes the error messages are, are a little cryptic. But uh, a typical code block will begin with parameters and then a declaration. Uh, when necessary, there will be another block for variables. And then the final block will be equations. Here under parameters, real C equals 1. So this is the definition of the value of the compliance or capacitance. A capacitance is 1 over stiffness. Uh, so you've got to be careful when you're entering stiffnesses in here. If your stiffness is 100, you need, you need to enter 0 0.01 for the capacitance. Under equations, state equals the integral of p dot f. What's p dot f? I'm going to scroll down here and click on interface for my C element. The C element has a power port called p, and it has a signal which is called state. So if I want to pull the state or deflection of this spring out and use it somewhere else in the model, uh, there's a signal for that. Where I put the half arrow power bond, that's power port P of the C element. The effort of that power port, and there's only one power port for a C element, the effort is P dot E, power port P effort. The flow is P dot F. Okay, so there's two quantities, effort and flow, associated with the power bond. The state variable of a C element is the displacement. So here, state is the integral of the flow, and the effort is displacement divided by capacitance. I could change this code to make it a stiffness model. I could define k as the parameter, and then the effort is k times the displacement. If I want to check to see if my code was correct, I can click on the single gear which checks the submodel. I go down here to this information window. It tells me that the model has no errors and no warnings. If I leave off the semicolon, for instance, and check it, it'll say that there's an error, semicolon expected. So you'll get used to the syntax here. We'll put that back in. Now I'll go back up. If I look at the TF element, the transformer, I can look at my system and I can know that um, V1 should be A over B V2 and the force at the right end should be A over B times the force at the left end. I double click on the lever. There's a declaration of the lever ratio and uh, the equations here are P1 effort equals lever ratio times P2 effort. P2 flow equals lever ratio times P1 flow. Uh, so how, what does that mean physically in terms of my system? First of all, what's P1 and P2? If I click on this bond, it gets highlighted, and I go down to the very bottom left-hand corner, and this information shows the connections at the two ends of that bond. This bond originates at power port 2 
of the V11 junction and goes into power port P1 of the lever. This bond goes from P2 of the lever into the V21 junction. So what I want really is if my lever ratio, if instead of calling it R I want to call it A over B, make sure I change it everywhere, A over B, I want P2's effort, which is the force at the right end, to be A over B times P1's effort. So I could either switch these I could switch the 2 and the 1 here, or I could just say P1's effort is 1 over A over B times P2's effort, and then P2's flow, which is V2, is 1 over A over B times P1's flow. Check the model, that's okay. So you've got to be careful with these transformers. There's a default code setting. Now, depending on where the causal strokes end up, 20SIM will automatically rearrange this e these equations so that they're in the correct input-output form. You'll also notice that the causal strokes are automatically assigned here. If I delete the causal stroke leading to the I element, you can see that because the one junction needs at least one, well, the, the one junction needs one flow input. There's two bonds here. The flow input cannot come from the effort source because the effort source must bulldoze effort into the whatever it's connected to. So that leaves the lever to define V1. And there's a causality constraint on the transformer that says if it's effort in, it must be effort out. This one junction needs a bond to define its flow. That leaves the C element. We see the C element is in its non-preferred derivative causality. The causal stroke is orange, a sort of a warning. If I go back and reconnect the I element, it reshuffles the causality, putting the two energy storage elements in their preferred causality. Okay, so now I'm going to check the complete model. Whoops, I have an error here. It says that the effort signal is not connected to this modulated effort source. If I double click on this, it defines a variable called flow. The equations are the effort out of the power port is equal to effort. Where does effort come from? Effort comes from a signal. If I double click down here, uh, these are the ports for the modulated effort source. The power port, which has effort P dot E and P dot F, there's a causality restriction here. The effort source must have fixed effort out. Effort is an input signal. Okay, as soon as you define one of these signals and give it a name, then it's that's like automatically declaring the variable name. So you can use the variable name effort in the code, even though it's not really declared. Okay, so basically I need a signal to give me that effort, which will then become the effort on the power port. I'm going to go into the signal library folder. I'm going to go down to Sources, and there's all kinds of these things here. Go through these folders and find out what's available to you. There's quite an impressive array of, of features here. I'm going to choose Wave Generator Sign. I'm going to click and drag it into my editor. Then I'm going to get into Connection Mode. I'm going to left-click, drag, and connect it to the MSE. You can see here I have a full arrow. That indicates that there is a signal with one piece of information and one piece of information only. If I click on it, it goes from sign generator output into the F modulated effort source as the effort variable. Okay, so now I should be good to go. Check the complete model again. No errors and no warnings. It counts up the number of submodels, the number of equations, the number of variables. It tells me I have two independent states, which jives with having two integral causality energy storage elements. How do I simulate? I click this button to start the simulator. Here I am in the simulator window. If I want to define the parameters, I click this parameters button. And here for the whole model I can see all the parameters at my disposal. So for example I can make the spring stiffness 100. If I want to look at the parameters for just one element I can click mass I can make the mass 10, 
for the sine generator, I'll make the amplitude 100 newtons. I'll make the frequency 6.28 radians per second, which is 1 hertz. I'll make the lever ratio A over B equal to 3. If I want to set the initial values of the state variables, this will allow me to set the initial state of the spring. In other words, I can set the initial displacement through which it is deformed. For the mass, I can set the initial state, which means I can set the initial momentum. So mass times velocity. Okay, so you got to be careful. The initial value for an inertial element is the momentum. I'll leave those as zero initial conditions. I'll hit OK. What do I want to plot? Well, I can hit this plot button, and on the y-axis I can choose whatever variable I want. I will choose the velocity of the left end of the lever. If I click on V1, I can plot the effort or the flow of any of the power ports. Now all the power ports should have the same flow if it's a one junction. Or I can just pick the flow uh, which is going to be in the one junction list of variables. It's you know, the common flow associated with all the bonded elements. Uh, if I want to plot something else, well, I can also give this whatever label I want. I'll call it V1. I can add a curve. If I, want, if I want the spring deflection, I can pick the state of the spring. I can call that spring deflection. Okay, that's fine. I'll hit OK. This run setup button, the play symbol with the uh, red pencil next to it, that lets me set my time duration of the simulation. And it lets me choose whatever integrator I want. I'll talk more about these, but modified backward differentiation formula is a pretty versatile one. It can handle algebraic loops or implicit equations or straightforward systems like this one. I'll accept the default tolerances. I'll hit OK. And I'll hit play. So here is the system response. There's a legend automatically added. The forced response to the sinusoidal force input. Here's V1 and the spring deflection. If it turns out that the scales are such that it's hard to see one of these plots, I can go up to the Distribute Curves button and click on that, and uh, it'll give each curve its own appropriate scale. Okay, so that's how you build a model in 20SIM. Check it, look at the causality, edit submodels, and generate whatever simulation output you'd like.